Okay, what's up? We are back. Um, part two, and uh, let's get let's get into it. Uh, okay, we, I mean we already got this. We've seen this guy play a lot of hands, and he's just like limping everything. And I mean this guy is just a you know a total fish, a total fish. If you don't know who the fish is in your first you know thirty minutes at the table or whatever, then you are the fish. Um, fortunately, we know who the fish are, and it's basically everybody, <laughs> except for maybe uh, this guy and this guy, um, but definitely this guy, definitely, definitely, this is our biggest fish at the table, um, easily. <clears throat> so he limps, uh, he gets isolated, uh, again, too small of an ISO, a standard ISO is uh, 4x. Um, and I mean, I wouldn't even open to this sizing. Like if I just opened the pot, I would open to 150. This is way too small. And I mean, had he gone to a, a standard sizing, he could have got me to fold King Jack here. Like if I had King Jack, I would just fold it. And now, you know, I'm, I'm calling. He can get me, like if he has King 10, he can get me to fold hands that he dominates, you know? But now... And he could have got a heads up against the fish. He's more likely to get a heads up against the fish when he goes bigger. And um, the fish play limp and all kinds of you know bullshit. So he can get a heads up with what's likely to be, um, even if he doesn't have any, any two cards, pretty much. You know, he can just raise and get him to fold. Or, get, or he can raise and see what a lot of flops and take it down. Uh, flop goes check, check. I lead the turn. Um, I'm leading the turn uh, for like three force pot, and I like it a lot because there's a lot of um, straight draws. Um, there's the heart draws. Um, a lot of worse hands can call me, and even for a larger sizing. So yeah, like the like the play. Also, out of position, you just want to go bigger. In position, you can go smaller. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward hand there. And again, we're going to show every hand as if we were, you know, playing this session. So, obviously folding that, but we're paying attention to the action. And this guy's limping, so clearly a fish. It doesn't have the fish tag, but I'm going to go ahead and tag it now. Um... You know, if this were a higher stakes tournament and I seen someone limp, I wouldn't be so quick to give them the fish tag. Maybe they're just, you know, play a little different style. Some some good players, um, like some good players limp at a real fishy table, uh, trying to play more pots. And that can be okay, I guess. Um, I mean, some players, some good players can make it work. But in general, I'm going to be real quick to tag players as a fish when I see them limp. And in a small stakes tournament, I'm going to be real quick to tag them with a uh, fish tag when they limp. So he limps. This guy leads for one fourth of the pot. Clearly a mistake. Um, let's see what happens. I mean, it takes it down, but that bet's just too small. I mean, it's just too small. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and guess he's got like an ace deuce or like a four five or a three four or a deuce three type of hand. Um, Six seven diamonds. Uh, this kind of range I'm putting them on. Three x five x works out for him though. And um, I mean, if I see this player do this, I'm gonna put less. Like he has a hundred percent bet versus missy bet and a seven percent aggression factor. However, those stats are gonna be skewed because he's betting so small. So. Um, that can really cause you to make some mistakes. Um, like, if, like, if I see these stats in game, I'm like, whoa, this guy bets a lot. He's very aggressive post-flop. But I might not realize that he's betting small, which, you know, doesn't necessarily... So it kind of 
contradicts the, his, the fact that he's so aggressive. Like, he's actually not that aggressive because it just looks like he's aggressive. He bets 100% versus Miss C bets. Wow! But he bets it for one-fifth of the pot. So, um, something to keep in mind. Um, and not to rely too heavily on stats. I mean, that's kind of a rare thing to happen. Someone have a high bet versus Miss C bet, but because they bet so small. Uh, but nonetheless, that can get you into some trouble. So... Maybe not rely too heavily on that kind of thing. You know, a lot of these stats I only use if I have a tough decision, like one way or the other, and I'm, I'm on the fence, then I'll use the stats to um, help me lean. Oops, sorry. And that's, that's a key point there is that, God, this is fucking fish. It's like making me mad. <laughs> It's tilting me. I'm not even playing. It's tilting me. Like, what the fuck are you doing? It's 2017. Um, but no, what I was saying is that, you know, that's a that's a crucial thing. When it comes to stats, don't rely on them too heavily. On them too heavily. Some you can, like a big blind call range, you can rely on pretty uh, heavily. Um, but something like a lot of your other stats, it's just kind of like use them to, like if you're on the fence on a decision, you can use like, you know, a player's aggression factor to to be like okay he's just so aggressive i can't fold here it's like it's like real close but if he's so aggressive i'm gonna go ahead and make the call or he's so tight i'm gonna go ahead and make the fold um you can really use them in those situations like okay he raises the flop you know when someone raises the flop it can really put you in, in a tough situation a lot of times like if they raise your c-bet well if someone has a like a big raise c-bet percentage that can really help you out um and make it not such a disgusting spot. Anyways, limp, limp, and this is fine. Uh, so a standard ISO would be 4x. 4x is 200. Add another 50, 250. So yeah, a, a standard ISO would be 250. We go just barely over, and uh, I like it. Perfect. Perfect sizing. We get called behind. I don't know how I feel about his flat with Jack Queen. It seems kind of bad because we're representing a lot of stronger hands than Jack Queen. He's putting in one eighth of his stack, which is like, what is that, like twelve percent, something like that. Um, he's out of position, most importantly, and he can get raised out of the pot behind him. Unlikely, but there's just a lot of reasons not to play this Jack Queen suited. <clears throat> and that's a good flop. He basically a big thing though. He's, he's going to be dominated and out of position by hands that I'm isolating with. Maybe he thinks I'm a, a, a you know um, a squeezy type player, which my stats do kind of indicate that um, over a small sample. Well, I don't know what his sample is on me, but I'm assuming it's small. I have only 11 hands on him so he probably only has 11 hands on me if he even has a hood um i don't think he does he's the small states he's probably just like i have two hearts they look pretty jack queen it's so pretty but um the hands i'm isolating with you know this is just not doing so hot jack queen out of position short uh it's just not doing so hot against an isolating range surprising we get it heads up you see bet he calls he turns two pairs. Uh, okay, so we have an interesting. Let's look at our sizings here. Our C bet, we C bet. Real small. I guess it's fine. We flop the nuts, so we're not really worried about anything. Um, actually, we can C bet this small uh, with a complete air on this flop, and just get him to fold out all his suit and connectors in small pockets. Um. And show a nice profit there. Um, I mean, we want to keep in his like jacks and tens, so we don't want to go too big. Ace is gonna call always, but you know, we're losing a little value against the ace, but we're getting much more value against jacks and tens and draws. It's a little scary though, because he, he does have a lot some draws that were. Not quite punishing as hard, but I, overall, I think the bet's fine. So I think it's perfect, actually. 
Um, maybe, th actually, he's going to call with a jack to like 325. He's going to call with a 10 for 325. So I think I like a little bit more, like 325 I think is a little better. And let's see how much is in the pot. If we go 325, there's going to be about, maybe about 1350 in the pot and about 1350 in his stack. So we can shove the churn more comfortably if we go a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think I like the 325. But, you know, this way we're setting up a three street game. Um... Hmm. Kind of. It's just kind of awkward. Uh, for balance sake, I think actually we should go bigger. And bet flop, shove turn. Um, exploitatively wise, we can go three streets and play this awkward. I mean, this turn bet though, man, like it's so it seems unbalanced to me, like. I don't know, man. Such an awkward turn in stack sizes, and the turn's awkward. We bet he calls. River. We bet he calls. I mean, we got max value versus his specific hand, I think, by our sizings. Kind of roped him in a little bit, but... Against his overall range, I don't think that our play is optimal. But maybe we had some kind of read on him. That we knew he um, didn't have an ace kind of a thing. We knew he kind of had that kind of a hand maybe. I don't know. It just... That was just a really weird fucking hand to be honest with you. I don't even know how to begin to analyze that one. That one was fucking weird. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that hand. That is a weird fucking hand. Uh, let's watch it one more time. Limp. Oh, it's, is it this one? No, it's not this one. It's this one. So weird. Yeah, the two initial limpers fold. Small blind calls. Flop the nuts. Weird turn. The problem is we're just... It's fine. The problem is we're never bluffing. But I guess we're not bluffing that board much anyways. So I think it's fire fine is fine. This definitely seems like a much more exploitive line than a GTO line. Uh, he opens too small. He opens much too small. Uh, not much too small, but he opens too small. We can flat or we can three bet this hand. Um, if he has a wide opening range, I like three betting, and it looks like he does. Over 91 hands, he has a 50% steal, so he's probably opening wide from that position. I think I like a little bit bigger of a sizing, like 395. Seems a little bit better. Especially with our hand. Hey, yeah. That kind of sucks. Probably have ace king. Uh, another mistake, he limps on a seven big blind stack. Wow. What the fuck? He leads for one fourth pot. He calls with jack high. Oh, turns a jack. And he just gets it in. Oh good. What the fuck was that? It's kind of tricky to like, like we're watching all these foolish plays that these guys are making, and we should be like in our at the table if we're playing this tournament. We should be thinking like, oh, that was bad. This guy did this bad. This guy did that bad. But it's it's the thing is. It's, it's kind of hard to remember unless they have like on stars it's actually great because stars has avatars and everybody uses their avatars and you can remember oh this is the guy from brazil with the brazil flag that played like a clown or whatever you know like he, he's the guy that check raised uh, fifth pair on the river or whatever just you know that guy plays crazy or 
you know, this guy, the guy that, that sea bets too much, this is the knit, and, but without avatars, like, especially just in this replay, it's hard, you just have to remember their name, and maybe where they were sitting, but, you know, you get move seats and stuff, it's just hard to remember, like, who is who, you know, in a live tournament, it's obviously much more easy to remember, because you're like, oh, the fucking old man, the tight old man, the tight grumpy old man, or whatever, you know, but, it can be hard when just looking at screen names to try to remember uh, a profile on a player. That's what, actually I think that's why Stars is I think the one of the best sites is you know the custom avatars. Like for that reason alone is one of the best sites um, because of that you can actually play like not this anonymous version of poker that is really seeming to be the be the the trend nowadays. Okay, sorry. Jack six. A limp. Clearly a mistake. A raise. A big raise. A fold. A fold. A limp. My God, man, this is 2017. I guess it's a $3 tournament, but I mean, <laughs> I guess it's because it's a three dollar tournament. It's crazy how the play, the 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 cat, the caliber of play is so much different between a ten dollar and a three dollar. I mean, I know it's three times the buy-in, but it's like fucking ten dollars and three dollars ain't shit, you know. Okay, um, sorry. Right, next time. A limp under the gun. Lamp, lamp. Crazy. Like, I don't, I definitely don't remember this much limping when I was playing. You know, early on, y you're going to see this, but later on in the tournament, a lot of these guys are going to have busted because they're obviously really bad. So they'll have busted halfway through the tournament, and by the, half, the second half of the tournament, it's going to be only um, the better players. All, all these, these idiots are going to be gone. And you're gonna be up against much stiffer competition, not much stiffer, but the complete like um, clueless people are gonna be gone. So another the gun lamp, that's too small of an ISO. Um, kind of weird. I wonder what this fish like. He's been limping everything, and then he min rays ISOs a limp. Um, makes you curious what he's doing that with. I'm gonna guess like you know Jack Queen. I don't think he does this with like his monsters. He could. It could be the trappy kind that like trap tricky trappy with his aces and kings. But I think um, this is more likely like a suited, pretty looking hand, like ace ten of diamonds or king queen of hearts or jack queen of hearts or something like that. It, even I'm mean, even gonna go as far to say as it's not something black. Like maybe it's something red and pretty. Like like I don't know. I, I'm just getting that instinct, uh that, that that's the way this player views it's pretty, so you know, he just min raises it. Um but he gets re raised again and this is too small also. Um even in a bigger stakes tournament, this is too small. I think you gotta go this deep. Maybe go a little bit bigger. It's just a little bit bigger, maybe like three hundred. I know it's very slight difference but I think it's a little too small and in this small stakes tournament I think it's definitely too small um, unless you're gonna be isoling uh, a wide range here then you can go smaller I guess it's more of a preference thing if you're going if you're isolating a wide range here um, then you want to put less money in the pot with a weaker hand but if you're isolating a strong range here you want to put more money in the pot with a stronger hand um, but in a small stack, I'm going to be, if it's, this is me, I'm going to be doing this with only really strong hands because I know they're going to call me a lot and I'm going to get like sick value. Um, so I'm going to isolate strong hands and I'm going to isolate them, um, for a bigger sizing. So now he gets called by two players and it's like, okay, now he just has to play straight forward post slot, but I guess he's in position. So yeah, I don't hate it. I like it if he, if he's comfortable doing that, but so this guy, like, fucking min god so bad min leads or whatever and then he gets raised and he calls when he min leads this is probably like um seven eight six seven 
um, eight jack, jack king, jack queen, nine jack, nine queen, nine king. Less likely to be a ten, I think. Less likely to be a sets. It's a good card for his range. He checks, he bets, he calls. So this min rays ISO, let's not forget that this guy min rays ISO'd his limp and then folded. So maybe he had something pretty like a 910 of hearts or something like that that he was like, okay, never mind. So what happened in the turn? Turn, he checks the bad card. This is a bad card for his range and a good card for his range. He checks, calls, leads for all in on the deuce. The fuck is he saying he has? That's fucking weird, man. Next time. And the gun limps, min rays. Oh, this is the same hand, I'm sorry. I keep doing that, sorry about that. Uh, under the gun limps. <laughs> and he isolates four, six of diamonds in second position. Like, I remember when I used to do this. Like, I used to do this, like, with all these hands, thinking I gotta. Oh, these are good bluffing hands, and I would just be bluffing with all of them. <laughs> like, five, six, six, seven. I thought those hands were just the shit. And I would just, like, raise for them from any position three bet them from any position and like yeah anyways he's actually got two overs <laughs> and then most of the time you face like this kind of flop and you're just like uh do i see bet do i not see bet just now i'm just giving up you know Oh, he bets it. And he calls. So now this is a proper open. This guy's been playing tight. I would fold a lot of hands to him. Okay, the table's been paying a little bit of attention because they folded to him, it looks like, so... Min raise is too small. Two colors. Bet. Fold. So we're just cruising. I mean, we personally are just on a. Uh, cruise mode waiting for strong hands and let these guys put it in their money with queen five suited and ace five off and jack queen off from early position and just all we gotta do just chill early game and just play the player cards pretty um basic shit here and the gun raise three collars uh, one eighth better, some shit, and they all fold. <laughs> there we go. Queens. Fold 3x in early position. I like it. Okay, so we are 79 big blinds deep. So let's talk about our open sizing here. In early position, we're going to go to a full 3x, maybe even like 255. And then late position, we'll do like 2.75. Like on the button, we'll do like 2.6. And. Uh, cut off, hijack, middle, we'll do 2.75, and then early position, we'll just do full 3x. Under the gun, maybe like 255. And one, two. <laughs> two callers. Uh, not good to see the king out there, of course. Uh, it goes bet, call. A little worrisome. Um, I'd be afraid someone has a king here. Um, 
you know, often enough for this to just straight up fold, but that's going to be too weak. Their bed sizing is too small. Um, you got to call here. Even though, like, my instinct would be like, oh, I don't like calling, but I got to call that size. Like, if they would have been bigger, I could get away from it on the flop, but... Into that sizing, um, no, you can't get away from it. You have to see a turn and see if they bet again. You bet small. Oh, I remember this hand. And I'm thinking when someone bets the turn like this, I think they've got like 10x, jack queen, a lot of jack queens <laughs> when they do this. And, um,. You know, maybe like ace jack, ace. I mean, yeah, like ace jack. Something they're just trying to buy a cheap. Um, maybe like seven, eight, eight, nine, nine jack, eight jack. No, not eight jack. Nine queen. Something they're trying to see a cheap hip. They're straight kind of card. You know. This guy could have anything. Um, he's just real wide. Uh, fish gonna be calling real wide so he could have anything so we call again and as you can see uh, I don't know how I feel about this call in the river like it just didn't feel like a king I remember it didn't feel like a king at all I guess it's bad that we have a, two queens in this hand because like, I'd, maybe I'd rather call with a 10 here because we block the bluffs he could have like jack queen Queen nine, but it felt like blocker bets the whole way, and then he bets a little bit bigger on the river, and I'm like, uh, I don't like this river bet. Like the flop and turn felt fine. It felt like you know we were probably good actually, especially once we saw the turn bet. We're like, okay, this could, we're probably good here most of the time, and then the river bet just seemed too. Um, it didn't seem blocky. It felt milky. If that makes sense, like, it didn't feel like a block bet, it felt like a milk bet, and I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to fold, but I paid it off, and, yeah. And actually, I, I remember thinking, like, oh, he's probably got Jack Queen here, even though we blocked, like, I didn't even, I don't even think I thought about it at the time, I thought it just really felt like Jack Queen, and I don't think I, we paid attention to our blockers, um, the blocker effect that we had going on, <laughs> like, it blocks, totally blocks Jack Queen. But I remember thinking that he probably had Jack Queen because the line he took really looked like a Jack Queen kind of a hand, and we were right; he had Jack Queen, <laughs> and we were. But we were also right that there was a milky looking bet on the river, kind of a tough hand there. Kind of unfortunate. I remember being a little steam, steamed after that, like, oh man. Uh, let's let's skip a couple of hands here. It was nice to see us play one. <laughs> so it goes all in for 27 big blinds. Ten queen is a fold in early position. Oh shit, do we skip we out? Oops. We must have did something where we went back. Sorry. Uh, for some reason it's not letting us see our other hands. Hand 557, five, five, 556. 550, 549. Hand 541. And then it goes back to 5. What's that about? I don't know. I guess we'll call that a video and we'll work out that kink. Um, so stay tuned.